Sometimes, even the law can't protect you. You better come back inside. If he starts firing, we are all dead. Who is this man? His name is Doc Holliday. Howdy, folks. Get ready for a ride hotter than a Texas barbecue. We're fixing to count down the top nine deadliest gunslingers in the Wild West. So, are you ready to meet the fastest draws and wildest outlaws that ever walked these dusty trails? Don't forget to fasten your seatbelts, cause this ain't your ordinary history lesson. Who's your bet for the baddest gunslinger? Let's saddle up and mosey on down the list. Doc Holliday. Picture this, a young feller, a mere 15 summers old, struck down with a diagnosis that make even the stoutest hearts quiver tuberculosis. It was the call of the West, the dry air like a whispered promise to mend them weakened lungs. Now Doc didn't mosey into Tombstone for no Sunday stroll. No, sir. He walked right into the heart of the storm, where the OK Corral etched its name into history with gunfire and grit. Right alongside Wyatt Earp, Doc made his stand, each shot telling a tale of vengeance, a tale that would linger in the Arizona breeze for years to come. But hold your horses. The vendetta didn't end there. When Wyatt's kin, Morgan Earp, met his maker, Doc saddled up for a ride through the lawless lands, chasing justice like a ghost in the moonlit desert. His shooting style, a deadly dance where his aim sought the arm of his foe, was like poetry and a hail of bullets. A deadly waltz where only one man would be left standing. Now, Doc Holliday wasn't just a gunslinger, he was a master of mayhem, and as the sun dipped low, casting long shadows on saloon doors, tales of his exploits spread like wildfire. And would you believe it? There's a twist in the yarn. Doc kin to Margaret Mitchell, the wordsmith behind Gone with the Wind. Imagine that, a gunslinger's blood mixing with the ink of literary fancy. Johnny Ringo. Known as a moody loner with a twist, Johnny's tale kicks off in 1864, when tragedy struck the Ringo family on the California Trail. Witnessing his father's demise at just 14, Johnny's path was set, and it wasn't your typical cowboy yarn. By 1875, Johnny had sauntered into Texas, stirring up trouble over a range feud and locking horns with lawmen along the way. His reputation for reciting Shakespeare gave this rough-edged gunslinger a touch of the culture. Yet his unpredictable temper kept everyone on their toes. Fast forward to 1882, Tombstone, Arizona. The place where the infamous Earp brothers and the notorious Doc Holliday crossed paths with Johnny. In the iconic face-off at the OK Corral, bullets flew. But it was a chance encounter with Doc Holliday outside the Oriental Saloon that added a dark twist to Johnny's saga. The infamous gunfight that followed left a cloud of mystery surrounding Johnny's demise. On July 14, 1882, Johnny Ringo's lifeless body was discovered in Turkey Creek Canyon. A gunshot wound to the head. Officially ruled as a suicide, whispers of Wyatt Earp claiming responsibility or others pointing fingers at Doc Holliday kept the legend alive. Whether it was a showdown with fate or a gunshot echoing through the canyons, Johnny Ringo's story remains a wild ride through the enigmatic corridors of the Old West. Bass Reads Now, a story that inspired the very essence of the Lone Ranger himself. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows on the dusty trails of the Old West, one figure emerged from the pages of history, and his name was Bass Reeves. Born into slavery before the Civil War, Bass Reeves' journey began in the crucible of adversity. In the scorching summer of July 1838, the shackles of bondage couldn't confine the spirit of a man destined for greatness. His owner, Colonel George R. Reeves, forced him into the Confederate Army, but fate had other plans for Bass. Escape led him to the embrace of the Creek and Seminole tribes in Indian Territory, where he honed his skills as a frontiersman. Post-emancipation proclamation, Bass moved to Van Buren, Arkansas, tilling the soil and building a family. However, it was his appointment as the first black deputy U.S. Marshal west of the Mississippi in 1875 that turned him into a living legend. Imagine a man, illiterate yet ingenious, memorizing warrants read aloud by judges. Bass Reeves' reputation echoed through the rugged landscapes as he brought over 3,000 criminals to justice. 
From tracking outlaws for five relentless years to facing off with the notorious Tom Starr, his life painted a vivid portrait of justice in the lawless West. As the sun dipped behind the towering peaks of the Wild West, casting long shadows on the rugged landscape, one figure stood unwavering, a man with a reputation as indomitable as the mountains themselves. Oren Porter Rockwell, known far and wide as the Destroying Angel, wasn't just a gunslinger. He was the guardian angel of the church. Picture the sprawling plains where the echoes of galloping hooves intertwined with the whispers of the wind. Born before the Civil War in June 1813 into a Mormon family in Belchertown, Massachusetts, Rockwell's early years were marked by his association with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Rockwell's devotion to the Mormon Church led him to become a close associate of Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. As a trusted bodyguard and personal messenger, Rockwell earned the moniker Destroying Angel. His loyalty was unwavering, even in the face of adversity, slander, and accusations. From orchestrating daring jailbreaks for Joseph Smith to standing tall against accusations, Oren Porter Rockwell emerged as the guardian angel of the church. His tale is etched not only in the annals of the Wild West, but also in the sacred narratives of faith where the echoes of his name resonate as a symbol of indomitable spirit and unwavering loyalty. Now, let me tell you about Buckskin Frank. He weren't a giant of a man, just five feet seven inches, but by thunder, he packed a punch that'd make a grizzly think twice. Wearing that buckskin jacket like a badge of honor, he sauntered into Tombstone, Arizona in 1880, a town teeming with rascals and rowdy folk. Frank Leslie, he weren't just any scout, mind you. No, sir, he was a showman, a feller who'd blast holes in saloon ceilings just to prove a point. But don't let the theatrics fool you. This man had a temper as fiery as a prairie sunset, especially when the spirits flowed a bit too freely. Now picture this, the porch of the Cosmopolitan Hotel, where love tangled itself with tragedy. Frank found himself in a heated scrape with a feller named Billy Claiborne demanding to be called Billy the Kid. Well, they squared off like two wildcats and Frank had his way, leaving Billy sleeping under the Arizona stars. Love and trouble seemed to follow Frank like shadows. His romance with Molly Williams, a singing gal and a lady of the night, took a dark turn in 1889. Shots rang out and Molly met her end. Frank, caught up in the whirlwind of violence, took a shot at another feller named a six-shooter Jim. Prison walls couldn't hold Buckskin Frank for long. After doing a stint in Yuma, he found his way back to the high-stakes game of the Gold Rush in Alaska. The man lived a life as unpredictable as a twister on the plains vanishing from public records in 22, leaving behind a tale of shootouts love gone wrong and a legacy as enigmatic as the southern breeze on a summer eve. Well, now let me spin you a yarn about a feller known as Bill Longley, a wild card in the deck of the Old West. Born in Texas in 1851, this hombre had more aliases than a poker cheat. Wild Bill, Rattling Bill, Tom Jones, Jim Patterson, Jim Webb, Bill Black, Bill Henry, Bill Jackson. Reckon he had a handle for every day of the week. Young Bill, he was a scrapper from the get-go. At the tender age of 16, he laid a man to rest, and from that day forth, he was knee-deep in trouble. Now, Bill had himself some strong opinions, especially about them Yankees and carpetbaggers, and he made it his business to do something about it. His guns were as quick as a striking snake, and he didn't shy away from taking down anyone he reckoned was a Yankee sympathizer. The reconstruction times were turbulent, and Bill, well, he made sure the storm followed him wherever he went. Now, let me take you back to a dusty day in Texas when a lawman crossed paths with Bill. Seems there was a bit of a spat, and the lawman didn't know Bill's trigger finger was faster than a prairie gust. Bill squared up, took aim, and that lawman ended up six feet under. But Bill's life weren't all shootouts and dust-ups. He had his share of close shaves, like the time a mob nearly strung him up for horse thieving, some feller even took a shot at him, but the bullet didn't find its mark. Bill, with his silver tongue, convinced folks it was just a case of mistaken identity. Now, Bill wasn't just a gunslinger. He was a man of the land, 
and working as a trail driver in Kansas. But trouble rode alongside him like a shadow, and after a spat with his boss, pale, Bill had a new notch on his gun. As the law closed in on him, Bill tried his luck with a plea for clemency, likening his case to that infamous John Wesley Harden. But the rope had been waiting for him, and in the end, justice caught up with Bill Longley, the wild and racist gunslinger of the Old West. Well, gather round, folks, as I spin the tale of Bat Masterson, a man whose journey through the Old West was as wild as a bronco at the rodeo. Born up yonder in Canada, Bat found himself drawn to the vast, untamed plains of Kansas in his youth. Now, his story didn't start with a badge. It began with the thunder of hoofs and the crack of buffalo rifles. In the year of the buffalo, 1874, when Bat was just a sprout of 20, he found himself staring down the barrel of a harrowing showdown at Adobe Walls in Texas. Against all odds, he and a band of buffalo hunters stared death in the eye, facing off against a horde of hostile Native Americans. They held their ground, taking down as many as 70 of them, a tale that echoed through the canyons like a campfire legend. But Bat's life wasn't all about buffalo and open prairies. Dodge City became his stomping ground, a town teeming with saloons gambling halls and more mischief than a rattlesnake in a rabbit hole. Why, Tarp, the man with a badge saw something in Bat, convincing him to holster his buffalo rifle and don the sheriff's star. Bat took to law like a duck to water. He wrangled outlaws, formed posse after posse, and had a reputation that made even the toughest hombres think twice before crossing him. But life had its twists and turns, and Bat's time as sheriff met its sunset. Yet, the spirit of adventure didn't abandon Masterson. He wasn't just a lawman, he was a man of many hats, sportsman, gambler, and even a sports rider. Rubbing shoulders with boxers and athletes, Bat never shied away from taking risks, always looking for what's next. Now, gather round, folks, as I spin the yarn of Billy the Kid, a name etched in the dusty pages of the Old West, a tale filled with gun smoke, quick draws, and a shadowy figure who danced with both law and outlawry. Born as Henry McCarty in 1859, he had later become the notorious outlaw known as Billy the Kid. Young Billy found himself on the rocky roads of the frontier, orphaned and untamed. The West, a canvas for outlaws, shaped this lad into a gunslinger of legend. His journey into the Notorious began with cattle rustling and steer thieving, earning him a spot on the wrong side of the law. But it was the Lincoln County War that truly thrust Billy into the spotlight. A bloody feud over economic power and control of the county, it was a conflict where Billy the Kid, barely out of his teens, rode the line between a gunslinger for hire and a defender of the underdog. With the shadow of violence and vendettas looming, Billy found himself entangled in the tangled web of frontier justice. As the kid's notoriety grew, so did the tales of his escapades. He was a master of escaping from the law, a quick-draw artist whose six-shooter echoed like thunder in the vast canyons. Yet, amidst the chaos, there was a certain charm about Billy, a charisma that left folks both fearing and admiring him. Now let's talk about the infamous Pat Garrett. The lawman who set his sights on Billy. The two played a dangerous game of cat and mouse, a dance that would ultimately lead to the kid's capture. Sentenced to hang, Billy the Kid met his end at the hands of Pat Garrett in 1881, but his legend didn't end there. Now, let me regale y'all with the tale of Jesse James, the infamous southern hero whose name echoed through the canyons of the Old West like a ghostly whisper in the wind. Born in the heart of Missouri in 1847, Jesse, along with his kin, witnessed the turbulent winds of the Civil War. His brother Frank rode off to join the Confederate cause, but young Jesse, too tender to join the fight, stood on the sidelines. Uh, the war, though, left scars on the James family. Union militiamen, with no mercy in their hearts, roughed up Jesse and tortured his stepfather, igniting a fiery rebellion within him. He joined Bloody Bill Anderson's guerrilla gang, unleashing havoc on those loyal to the Union. In the shadows of the war, Jesse became a figure draped in both infamy and notoriety. 
Post-war, the fire of the Confederacy's defeat still burned in Jesse's veins. The James brothers, undeterred and fueled by the embers of humiliation, turned to a life of robbing banks, trains, and stagecoaches. The legend of Jesse James, a modern-day Robin Hood, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, began to swirl like dust on the prairie. Jesse reveled in the attention, crafting a myth around himself as a southern hero. Yet, the tide turned against him. In Northfield, Minnesota, the folks weren't too fond of former rebel, and a shootout ensued, marking a turning point in Jesse's outlaw days. The people fought back, taking down some of his gang, and Jesse, along with Frank, had to disappear into the shadows, adopting assumed names. But Jesse couldn't resist the siren song of the outlaw life. He returned to a changed world, one less sympathetic to his cause. In 1882, a traitorous gang member helped the authorities close in on him. Shot in the back of the head, Jesse met his end, leaving behind a legacy etched in the annals of the Wild West. So, tip your hat to Jesse James, the southern hero whose story was as tangled as the vines in a Mississippi bayou, a name that lingered long after the last echoes of gunfire faded on the frontier winds. Well now, ain't that a wild ride through the dusty trails and saloons of the Old West where legends were born in the gun smoke and echoed through the canyons? These deadliest gunslingers, each with their own tale of justice, revenge, and the untamed spirit of the frontier, have left their mark on history. So, as the sun sets on this here journey, may these tales linger in your thoughts like the ghostly whispers of a bygone era. Remember, partner, the Old West may be a distant memory, but the echoes of those six shooters and the legends of these gunslingers will forever ride the winds of time. Until next time, happy trails and may your story be as bold as the sunsets on the prairie. Y'all take care now, you hear?